for a comprehensive audit of the August 9th, 2022 general election. That will be a big ticket issue. Even as that is happening, this morning, President Ruto and Deputy President Gashagwa uh, also are hosting former and current Jubilee MPs at State House, among them Kanini Kega and Sabina, ahead of the rally today. This is happening this morning. President William Ruto and also Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa are hosting former and current Jubilee MPs at State House, among them Kanini Kega and Sabina Shege, ahead of rally today will they talk about what also the general secretary of jubilee this is jeremiah kioni has been saying that we have the facts and this is where we want to discuss about these facts and ibc uh, today as well uh, keep it Arab, Arab Kirwa, i want just to begin that particular conversation with you because they say this we have facts and facts are stubborn mm -hmm. right and it will be very very uh disingenuous of, of Azimio to say we have facts, we have credible, uh, credible evidence, and then when we come to, when it comes to, to, to the facts itself being presented, it, it, it doesn't really hold water at the end of the day. Well, that's my prayer that the facts they have. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you can use all this hyperbole. Yes. We have facts, we have bombshells, and then, you know, you put into just again like this is just hot air. Yeah. Well, my prayer is what they are saying they have credible evidence that uh, will stand the test of time. Uh, I have not myself had the opportunity to share with them uh, the information that they have. Uh, the only thing is uh, I've given it just a ca casual look without really perusing through deeply. You realize that the, the disparity between the winner that was announced by ABC and the runner-up runner, runner mm -hmm. is bigger than any conventional wisdom would allow. Uh, 2.1 million votes, for me, that is overstretching our luck. It's but, overstretching your luck? Yes, it's overstretching <coughs> our luck. Because, you see, this was a very closely contested race. <coughs> and uh, I expect, <coughs> even if we had won, mm -hmm. it would have been a maximum of 500,000 votes being the difference between us and uh, William Ruta. And when he won with 200,000 votes, I knew there were certain uh, lapses that we had as a, as a meal, um, even from the part of the country where I come from, and many other parts that I really don't need to give the litany of issues <coughs> and the complaints why Azimio lost. But those are um, interesting stories, and I've maintained that uh, William Ruta uh, had a better team in terms of uh, he created some teamwork. For us, uh, we had so many leaders who did not create the necessary synergy uh, for purposes of um, uh, having a smooth and seamless campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our candidates all over the country, even those who are running as independent but more allied to us, they did not get the support they expected. And, uh, and some of the agents uh, uh, did not arrive even in various polling stations. And we, are, we now allowed UDA to overrun us. You know, even where we could have gotten even 10,000 votes in a, poll, in, a, in a constituency, we got fewer than that because, not because the people were not with us, but because we did not secure the votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do not. We do not protect. You do not secure the vote. Yeah, and we do not protect. Senator Oburu says that uh, you know William Ruto outsmarted us, and if you are now alluding to that fact that uh, you outsmarted, then why are we had heading to the rallies? That uh, he was a game changer. Uh, he beat you to the punch. You know, it's part of the, it's part of the process of building for the next election. We always learn from our mistakes. Okay. And I've always maintained that you are smarter than us because he took away the burden of incumbency and placed from himself and placed on Raila's shoulders. And yet he was the deputy president for 10 years. You cannot be a deputy. So that, that was the reflection that he used? Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and so he was smarter than, uh, than us. Thank and you. we did not try to shake off that burden of incumbency. Right. Yep. Uh, I want just to go back to Senate. Uh, Thursday, there was a special sitting. Looking at the voting patterns that we were following, uh, 
we could see a lot of legislators who are leaning actually to Azmiu uh, you know, were, were vouching for this particular bill, the IBC amendment bill, that had amendments, and uh, that amendment was think was quashed. We were discuss discussing here last Monday with uh, the, the chair of the delegated uh, legislative uh, committee, Hilary Segei, and there were a raft of issues that were to be put on that particular, uh, you know, report itself. But that never saw the light of day. But looking at the voting patterns, uh, nine votes, against 21? Was that the figure there? Uh, if I may remember very well. We have very telling names that uh, I saw there. I think, uh, uh, <laughs> Senator of um, Se Senator of Wajir, right? Uh, we had the Senator uh, Senator of, uh, of Kisumu? No? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, Kisumu. Yeah, yes. yeah, Kisumu we have the voted Kisumu. with us. Yeah. Yeah. You, you voted with, with yeah, UDA. Yeah, voted with UDA. <laughs> well, I don't know. We, <laughs> we, have, we had Senator Mamburi as well. I think... Uh, no, he voted that, with UDA. Mar Maruma, I think. Maruma. Yes. Maruma. 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 Yeah. Yes. Mm. yeah. So Maruma also voted with UDA. Yeah. yeah. Although... I don't know what my I think the can, can, can I hear from okay. the Congo Morgan okay. so that I, I hear what is really happening? Are they, do they, they don't really believe in the, in the stand of Azmio? Or what really is informing this? Really, I think we can first, look at what is really happening within uh, Azmio. First, uh, you know why we have uh, three uh, arms of government, executive, legislature, and uh, judiciary, is that each should try to overcheck the other, checkmate the other, rather. And uh, we should not have uh, the executive running the affairs of parliament. If, if we reach that state of affairs, then it's really a warning sign that uh, our institutions, including the institution of parliament, is dying. The chair of JLAC is a brilliant, brilliant uh, young lawyer, Hilary Sige, and he's been a panelist. You're supposed to be here. And, and he's given me an impression of uh, a progressive uh, mind on the floor of the house. And I, I, I agree with him on a number of, of issues, including, I was very impressed, you know, when last Monday I, I came to the show and he told, he told Kenyans through this show that, you know, my committee has uh, taken views from the public. We have uh, come up with uh, a proposal to amend, you know, the, the bill that was sent to the Senate by the National Assembly. And actually on Monday morning, he, he tabled a fantastic report. And, and uh, it had some proposals that were going to give the two political sides an opportunity to pick candidates who are to pick the next commissioners. But it seems during lunch break, pressure or calls that came from uh, the powers that be put pressure on him to withdraw those amendments. And when we went back uh, to, to now go to the second reading and vote on the amendments, he rose up without calling another meeting of the jailer committee and said, now I'm withdrawing the report. I felt sorry for him because you could see, you could see the mood that he was very unhappy and there were some attempts to reduce him into a paper tiger, you know. You, you come up with something but it's rubbished. That was really, really sad. And I felt sorry for CGA because you put an advert in the newspaper, you receive uh, comments from stakeholders, from the public. You do a public participation exercise. Having collated views, you call a meeting of your members of a committee. Then you come up with a report that is bipartisan, that is owned by both sides of the coalition, and you incorporate public views. Then you come to the floor, you table that report. The least that uh, the UDA administration should have done is to allow at least Sige to move his amendments, not to push him to withdraw, then Kenyans can feel that they are part of the legislative process. Otherwise, if you read the jurisprudence, you cannot take public participation for granted. Mm -hmm. You cannot receive views from the public, table the report on the floor, then you don't allow the House to debate and pass a vote. The least they should have done is to allow the report to be debated, and then they whip numbers to outvote his reports.
But to treat uh, the chair Jelak the way he was treated uh, last Thursday, I feel sorry for him and I hope that uh, that's the last of what you have seen. Uh, because you need to inspire chairmen of, of committees. Business of the House, Mwishmua Kiro will tell you, Mwishmua Mgatana will tell you, the business of the House is run largely through committees. Yeah. We, we don't need to agree with the committee mm -hmm. report, that's okay. But once it comes to the floor, we should not intimidate uh, chairman, you know, to feel, how does he go back and face his, his members? You, you put him in a very bad situation. So, uh, we were outvoted, some of us who are in support of uh, Hilary Sige's his amendments. We had one of the members putting through uh, an amendment just in line with what Chairman was, Sige was proposing, but we outvoted. Uh, th that's all I can say about the conduct of business on the floor of the House and uh, the pressure that is being exerted by the executive. Number two, we are looking very disjointed as opposition. Mm -hmm. Give it to this side of government where uh, Senator Mgatana belongs. They look more organized. They respect their chain of command. They respect their leader, leader and they are able to move their agenda as an entity. On this other side, it's, it's like we are a divided house. You have mentioned a number of senators, and that's their constitutional right, really. <laughs> you know, they have a right to vote whichever way. But when you lose a vote 927, if I'm right, uh, Senator, mm, it, it was 27-9. Yeah, 27-9. You know, with a, a party that uh, has over 21 senators uh, elected in the House, that's not a good message we are sending to our support base. Because if we move with an agenda that we want to create a panel of IBC that... Uh, will be bipartisan, that is not uh, really filled by choices of one side of, of, of the political divide, because we have the majority forming government and the minority. And our, our arguments on the floor was that let us give an opportunity to the both sides to pick the panelists that will uh, pick the next uh, set of IBC uh, commissioners. So when you find that uh, we are not pulling together as the minority side, then that sends a signal that our house really is not uh, in order. There is uh, there's something wrong, terribly wrong with us, and I, I think we need to reconvene and uh, de 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 deliberate and discuss how we need to push the agenda of the minority on the floor of both the National Assembly and the, the Senate. Thank you. That's all I can say for, about the for me, decision. For me, I, I see it a bit different. I was in the house and I debated uh, one particular issue very, very passionately. And I think we convinced the other side. You see, the, 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 the main issue of contention was that they wanted to get rid of a person nominated to, from the Public Service Commission to sit in that, in that committee. Because there is a committee that is supposed to select the... The, the, the potential, the potential, uh, the panel that is supposed to select the panel, the potential commissioners. So, the main issue of contention was amongst the list of those names, should we remove the nominee from Public Service Commission? And I, I remember debating this and saying, Public Service Commission is an institution that has been there for many years, and it also has institutional memory. And I urged fellow senators to, to, to remember that some of the people who have been sitting in very successful uh, constitutional commissions and other independent commissions have been through similar processes. And public service will probably give you someone who has the experience, the institutional memory, and someone who has expertise uh, to help the team in terms of selection. Now, some proposal was that we, we remove that person. Uh, I don't know, because Public Service Commission has, is, is, is appointed, I don't know, by the president and stuff like that. That argument did not hold water. And also, they, they, they were trying to say, we remove that position, give it to political parties caucus. Now, you remove an opportunity to put an expert to bring another politician. And yet the politicians were also already represented by the 
Parliamentary Service Commission nominees who are to come from both sides of opposition and the side of... Okay. of the, so I, I, I think we, we have to just agree that sometimes senators are there to listen to the other side and agree with what makes sense. And uh, when the senators from the other side are voting, they are not betraying the cause. They have listened to the argument. They have seen where people are. They have seen the sense of what they are doing. And they are, in terms of representing their, uh, their counties, they have participated and they have argued and they have seen and they vote. It should, senators should never be voting machines. They are there to represent the will of the people. And that is what they did. So it's, it, to me, it wasn't even a victory as such because there wasn't something like winning and losing. Even the JLAC uh, chairman, uh, I mean, unlike what my learned friend here is saying, I didn't see any pressure on him. We talked to him, you know, even the majority leader when he was moving the initial motion. He was saying, what is, what is the, the wisdom in the committee uh, proposing to remove people from public service commission and then putting another extra politician? He, he, so we talked to him after we, start, we, start, we did the debate. We, we told him, look, chairman, we agree, you know, your proposal makes sense and so on, but there, there is this bit that you're missing. So he's allowed to withdraw. He's allowed to give reasons. And we are uh, people who are on the opposition are allowed to agree because in most cases at the Senate, unlike maybe in the National Assembly, a lot of decisions are made by consensus. And many of those senators were agreeing with where we were going. And I think this team, whoever will sit there, will give us good commissioners. Another point, final point that I made in that argument, I said, if we can perfect the election system's integrity itself, then we don't need to worry about who sits in that panel, who sits as commissioners. Because if we can perfect, and when I'm talking about perfect, is to remove more of the human element in it. We have good system, good electronics, good technology, and uh, protected technology that can tell us who the winner is in uh, wards, in constituencies, in counties, and in the, at the national. Then even if my brother is the, is the chairman, and he's supposed to announce. Thank you. If the technology is saying this, there's nothing you can do. So I'm saying that apart from choosing this personnel, the other thing which I said should be done very early is proposals to change the law and to make it comfortable for all political parties so that everyone feels that the system is good enough to, to handle elections. And once that is done, it doesn't matter who is sitting there. Thank you. We will not have drama like we did before. Thank you. Yes. Right, uh, we come to a close uh, right now, and I will just want to give uh, you each of you 30 seconds to just give your closing remarks, uh, beginning with you, Horrible Kiroa. Yes, thank you. I think this is time for nation healing, and nation healing means both sides of the divide should, re should reduce their, their hostilities and we focus on how this country can move forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah, but mine is just to appeal to, to, to the government to try and address the rising cost of living for, for Kenyans. Uh, having had uh, sentiments for my people of uh, Yamira and also try and fix the healthcare system in the country. Thank you, thank you. Mine is to say that opposition should play their role and not to hold unnecessary political functions that don't add to development. This rally should be condemned by all Kenyans who are of goodwill. Let the children go to school. If you want, you could even do it on Saturday. I mean, why on Monday, surely? They should uh, rethink what their role is and allow Kenyans to go on with nation building as they build their political careers. That is what I would say. Thank you. Gentlemen, I really appreciate your input this morning as always. I treat every Monday. Thank you for Thank you. giving us at least uh, the feel and flavor of what is happening on the political beat this morning. And just to remind you, just uh, to keep your eyes peeled on Kamukunji, that is where the rally will be on today. He will be jetting into the country at 12 on the nose and uh, he will head straight to Kamukunji, that is right Honorable Railo Dinger, where they are seeking 
to have a comprehensive audit of the report. There is a dossier which is a, a bombshell 